Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the Jocelyn Hernandez situation. I've been wanting to talk about it for a while now. But you guys know I've been busy settling in. It's been a lot going on. So recently, Jocelyn Hernandez was on The Breakfast Club. And um, a lot of people were giving them backlash because when they were first announcing that she was coming to The Breakfast Club, she did a skit where when she walked in, she was just slapping the shit out of everybody. And a lot of people were saying that that was very disrespectful because we all know she got into that fight about a week ago with Big Lex. And so that fight went viral. This was at Floyd Mayweather's event. And you just saw Jocelyn just putting hands on everyone. She literally beat that girl. It was her and her friends. They jumped her. Um, But they beat her out of her clothes. And she ended up going to jail for two days for assault. Um, And Big Lex was a girl from Jocelyn's Cabaret. I never watched that show, so I don't know the ins and outs of it. But what I heard, the girl's like 25, and she'd been talking shit about Jocelyn for like the past year. And finally, they met up with each other, and Jocelyn and her friends basically jumped her and whooped her ass. And so a lot of people thought it was very distasteful for the Breakfast Club to perpetuate Jocelyn putting hands on another black woman and use it as a skit for the Breakfast Club intro. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch that really quick here. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So then there was another clip that went viral, and we had posted this on Instagram. And in this clip, you have Jocelyn speaking about her black identity and how she feels like Amber Rose, um, you know, is a black woman and the fact that she does not claim to be a black woman. For some reason, this really, really pisses Jocelyn off. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this video, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I've always considered myself a black woman. Mm-hmm. But I was born in Puerto Rico and I mm-hmm. speak Spanish. My first language is Spanish. Mm-hmm. But that's that that doesn't take away from the fact when I walk in the that's building, right. people look at me and they say, that is a black woman, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I've always been cool and love to be a black woman. Yeah. And they be like, Afro-Latina, no bitch. I don't have an Afro. <laughs> I don't have an Afro. I don't have an Afro. And yeah. I am a black Woman that was born in the island of Puerto Rico that speaks Spanish, mm-hmm. and I teach my daughter. My daughter. You gonna confuse up. the shit out of somebody right now? But go ahead. <laughs> but why? Because <laughs> you're Puerto Rican. I am Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. Of course, I speak Spanish and I'm Latin. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's more than just saying that. For me, it's just that I'm proud to be black, mm-hmm. whether I'm Spanish or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I just feel true. like a lot of people just have a problem with me being so proud to be black. Yeah. What's wrong with me? Proud that I have that I have this that I have this color. Yeah. And like, was what's that, the problem? And was that um, what kind of like ticks you off with Amber? Like, cause I, I kind of seen that it was like, e- even Dude, like what happened? Cause I don't know what to tell us what happened with Amber. I, I, I mean, I didn't have the camera. I wasn't in that class. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, but you know, oh, I seen I a little bit. Say. She was like telling her like, yo, like you don't want to be black. You don't want to be black. I've seen. You told Amber she didn't want to be black. Yeah. So, so what happened? But I've seen previous, you know, like it's been years. Everybody, it's not no damn secret. You know, Amber really, she, you know, she she like to dismiss the black side of her. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, she wasn't lying. I guess that's just a trigger. You know what I mean? Who but wasn't lying? You. I was in line, and you know, I was in line because we were talking about the black, the black shit being black. Yeah. And I just had to let the bitch know, bitch, you don't want to be black. You, you came out of a big black pussy just like I did. Mm. My mama got a big old black pussy. Mm. She's a Puerto Rican woman, but that lady black. Yeah. And her mama was blacker than this motherfucking table. My mama. Mm-hmm. So I come out of black pussies. Mm-hmm. You came out of a black pussy, but you don't want to. You don't want to say you black. Mm-hmm. That's weird to me. Yeah. That's so weird to me. Yeah. That's so weird to me. I don't care what your color is. Mm-hmm. It, it, I always thought she considered herself black till I really seen that she was a Karen when I got there. Okay. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. It was just previously. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so you said that Karen. was crazy to find out that she was a Karen. Yeah. So what do you mean Karen? Like she she did not respect black rights? Well, like, because I, I didn't see the, the show. So I'm, I'm, I'm confused. So I want you to tell me because I don't know. You know what a Karen is? I, yeah, I do. But then that's what she is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. then y'all got into a, a Philly and, and, and Miami uh, per scuffle? 
We got who? A little scuffle? <laughs> who? A little Philly, a Philly Miami, Miami scuffle? Miami scuffle. <laughs> Talk about Listen, that Joan is not from the part of Philly that you think she's from. Hey, mm. yo, I'm done with her. That Joan yeah. is not from... <laughs> Jocelyn practice that one. That Joe one. Ever don't no, want I ain't practice no Joe one. Every, every, the only thing I practice is my bullet points that I'm supposed to speak on. I don't practice nothing else. Everything else is going to always be it's me, and you improv. should know that. That Joe one. That Joe one. You know her husband is from Philly, so you know I know a few words. Oh, Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So you guys just heard that Breakfast Club interview. So it's a lot to unpack here because if you guys did not watch the College Hill um BT special. I did end up watching it. Um, I ended up binge watching it so I could kind of get the context of everything. I watched it about a week and a half ago and I thought it was a pretty decent show. Um, the fight between Amber and Jocelyn was not shown. You just saw like the clip of Amber, you know, basically bum rushing her and them fighting. Um, but when they both got kicked out, it was sad because you can tell they both felt really bad. You know, Jocelyn didn't start the fight, but she was definitely picking, picking, picking at Amber till Amber finally snapped. I didn't like how Amber tried to lie and act like Jocelyn hit her first when clearly Amber was the one who was the aggressor in the situation. But I get it. She was getting picked on and she couldn't take it anymore. And I think Quay kind of knew that whatever issue Jocelyn and Amber were having throughout the series before the fight in the classroom that it had not been addressed and something was going to end up happening. Stop being so sensitive because you and I are very cool. So for you to yeah, do but that. Yeah, but it's not about being sensitive. Well, you Jocelyn, being sensitive. No, but if you're but not, you're not, a you're, not you're not white though. You're black. My father is white, though. Okay, but to me, to me, your mother's But your that's not black. about you. It's okay, about me. It is about me when I feel like saying what the fuck I want to say. You can't check me on that. And if you go and check me, then check me. Okay, I checked you. I'm but checking you, you but, now. Yo, but you're not, because I don't give a fuck about how you're well, I don't give a fuck about you. Because I can say the same thing about you. I don't consider you a white person. So that's the thing. That's not about what you consider. That's the whole point. You mix like me. You mix like You know what's your problem? Your problem is that you really want to be a white girl. Let's just get down to the point. Jocelyn! No, 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 professor. Let's get down to the point. Jocelyn. Your problem is that you really don't even want to be black. She's conflicted with her blackness. See, when I was growing up, I chose to be black. I was born in Puerto Rico, a Spanish-speaking place, so I'm a black Hispanic. But Amber, she don't know how to behave in black places or in white places. She feel like she got to cater to each of them. But I damn sure know that she doesn't cater to nothing black. Wait, wait, wait. She went there, wait, so wait, let wait, me wait, 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 wait. Nah, wait. you want to go there? Wait, let me see. No, there she go. Quiet, baby, quiet, baby, quiet, baby. Oh, So now we fast forward to the Breakfast Club and Jocelyn is saying, you know, she considers herself a black woman and she doesn't understand why Amber Rose doesn't. And this was my issue. I had wrote this on Instagram. I said, for the life of me, I don't understand why people care so much how Amber Rose identifies. People are acting like she's a brown skinned, kinky haired woman that's denying her blackness. She's racially ambiguous. She's more white than she is black. Her mother is racially ambiguous and her father is Italian. Where is this wealth of black ancestry inside of Amber that people are steadily looking for? She is phenotypically white slash white passing. She does not look like a phenotypical black woman. Hence why she says she is mixed, which she is. It's starting to seem like there's some jealousy in the mix. In the past, Jocelyn herself acted like she was more exotic because she was Puerto Rican and spoke Spanish. Now when it's convenient, she's a pro-black woman. And I've watched Love and Hip Hop from day one, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And I remember how she would act like she was better than a lot of the African-American cast. How she would act like she was better than Mimi, who was African-American. You know, because she spoke Spanish. She always, you know, let everybody know she's Puerto Rican and Puerto Rico and, and this and that. And it wasn't necessarily because she was proud to be Puerto Rican. Because I think most Puerto Ricans are very proud to be Puerto Rican. They keep a Puerto Rican flag on their car, in their car. But she was almost doing it as a way to separate herself from the African-Americans on the cast. Like, oh, I'm better than, you know, because I look a certain way, certain features. Because let's also not forget, back in 2017, Jocelyn was being drug up and down the Internet for saying some very disparaging things about Stevie J's oldest daughter. Remember, a lot of people forget that she had called her a hoe, called her nappy-headed and everything else. And I have the receipts here. 
So Jocelyn wrote, and this was after the girl was basically on television telling her dad, maybe him and Jocelyn need to split because Jocelyn's kind of toxic. So she wasn't saying anything that wasn't true because the relationship was extremely toxic at the time. So Jocelyn took to social media and she said, that whole mad because I run her daddy. Now run along and find your own cock to suck, you nappy head. So somebody replied back to her. They said, now if somebody said that about Bonnie, you'd be upset and want to fight. Just do what a stepmom's supposed to do and step up to the plate, girl. So then Jocelyn replies back and she says, that young lady's 18. She's grown enough to ditch it out. She will be grown enough to take it. I'm done with this conversation. Back to reality. So she caught a lot of backlash back then because of her calling Stevie J's daughter nappy-headed, calling her a hoe and everything else. And so it's very funny now that she's trying to constantly act like she's so pro-black and black features and this and that. But the first thing she did was attack that young woman's hair. I think the thing that's very frustrating with this whole Amber Rose racial discussion that I'm seeing online is I don't think people really know Amber Rose's backstory. And I think people just assume that, you know, she's just some mixed girl who's trying to, you know, only choose whiteness and she doesn't want to have anything to do with her black side. But if you understand Amber Rose's genealogy, she does not have that much black in her. That's why I don't understand why people are so upset that she claims to be mixed. She's a very racially ambiguous woman, and she's always said that. Now, let's take a look at who Amber Rose's mother is. Amber Rose's mother, her name is Dorothy Rose, and Dorothy Rose is from Cape Verde. So she's Cape Verdean, but her maternal grandmother is Scottish. So she also has white in her on top of her being Cape Verdean. Now, for those who don't know, Cape Verdean is a little, little country in Africa. It's in the islands. So it's not in Africa. It's in the islands near Africa. And the people of Cape Verde, they are a mixed race of people. These are not full black people. These are not people who are as, as dark as Sudanese people. They are mixed ethnicity there. It's almost like if you look at, you know, Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic, there's a lot of mixed ancestry there. Same thing with Cape Verdean. In Cape Verde, the people there are a mixture of European and African descent, okay? And they often refer to themselves as Mosquito or Creole, um, also known as Creole, uh, some of the African ancestry that they have is Fulani, but a lot of the people there are mixed with Spanish, Portuguese, and Portuguese is the main language there. So I'm going to show you what some of the people in Cape Verde look like. So as you see, they range in hair color, eye color, skin tone, you know, but the main thing is that most people from Cape Verde, they look more racially ambiguous. They don't look like typical West African people. So now you take Amber Rose's mother's ethnicity of being Cape Verdean, which is already a mixed race culture, and then add on top of that she has a white Scottish mother. Her mom is racially ambiguous. Then on top of that, Amber Rose's mom gets with her dad. Her dad's name is Michael Levinchuk, and he is of Irish and Italian descent. OK, so once again, Amber Rose probably only has 25 percent black in her. Most of her family, they consider themselves Creole, you know, mixed. And she even spoke about this years ago when she was crying and saying how a lot of her family didn't come to her wedding because they were not in support of her, you know, marrying an African-American guy. Because, again, in certain cultures, they feel like, you know, if you go darker, that's a bad thing. You know, it messes up the La Raza and all that stuff. We see that a lot of times in Dominican and, and Latino cultures where they say you never go darker. You know, you always go whiter. You want to enhance the race. And obviously her family also has that mentality. Um, some people who are of Creole descent here in Louisiana had that mentality that you only date other Creoles, you only date other light skinned people, you never date people darker than a paper bag. So, you know, colorism is deep, it's embedded in the culture. With my family, they feel like they're more superior or better than an African American because we're Creole and we have culture and that's something that I've battled with um, most of my life. It's more of like the older people in my family. They didn't come to my wedding because they didn't feel 
Um, so difficult. I'm angry that my family is like that. And they want to pass so bad that they raise my mom and my uncles and my aunts to to not fully know their culture and our younger generation we've embraced it so much um and i feel like that's why my father is white when the europeans and the africans produced an offspring uh, that offspring of course was then uh, colonialized and bounded uh, in a community and so those of us who were darker could not enter sometimes. Clearly for many, many years, African Americans in particular who were the products of interracial marriages enjoyed some benefits, if for no other reason, but because their offspring were the offspring of some of those slave masters. There are those of us historically who felt that, uh, that the definition given of, quote, Creoles and their role which is really uh, a role of uh, a brokerage because the elite never talk to the peasants directly. They always have an intermediary. And so here it was, they were seeking someone who in fact were their, their distant cousins uh, who would serve the purpose of uh, abridging, uh, bridging the gap. And uh, to that extent, if you internalize that, then you too began to believe, if you're black, you too began to believe that this is the only way that you're gonna get any advantages. I guess there was a certain um, strain amongst folks who did look like me as saying, well, those light-skinned Negroes really don't wanna be with us, so why would we wanna be with them? And that's the, that's the historical precedent for some of that resentment that goes the other way. It is natural that darker skinned black people would feel the resentments that some of them feel towards lighter skinned black people a hundred years ago or 150 years ago. It was the result of the fact that legally, lighter skinned people tended to be the free people of color here in the Louisiana situation, if you will. Uh, remember, there were three distinct classes. You had the white class, you had the black slave class, but then you had les gens de couleur. These were free people of color, some of whom had come from Haiti. In addition to the slave classes of Haiti, remember that when the Haitian Revolution took place and Toussaint Louverture threw out the white ruling class, he also threw out some of the people of color who represented mixtures, again, racial mixtures, lighter skinned blacks who had been allowed even in Haiti to have positions of privilege over their black slave brethren. The same thing carries over culturally and attitudinally here. There are institutions, schools, social clubs, churches, uh, all existed for the free people of color or the Creoles and uh, separate and distinct from those of us who were not free and not Creole. But I can't get mad at Amber Rose for not seeing herself as a black woman. There's nothing about her that screams black woman. She has light eyes, white skin, you know, straight hair. So I don't understand why people are mad that she just considers herself mixed. She is of mixed heritage. And I think that Jocelyn at this point is just trying to pick at her and, you know, make her look bad. So there's a lot of people who are saying things like this. Amber Rose basically hustled her status. She got coins off of blackness and black culture. And now she wants to identify as mixed. But if you really watched her come up, she's never identified as a black woman. Because phenotypically, she does not look like a black woman. If she came into these spaces and said that she was a black woman, you would have black women saying, no, you're not. And a lot of times, mixed people cannot win. If they say that they're black, people say, no, you're not black. People like me, you have a white mother or you have a white father. You are biracial. If you're full black, then what am I? You know, and that's just the truth of the matter. Um, as far as her, you know, getting her coins off of black culture and hustling black culture, that is on black culture. Black culture put this woman on a pedestal. She was dating Kanye West. It was black women who ran after her, who is this mysterious woman who's bald and wearing glasses and she's from Philly and she's so pretty and this and that. It was black women who elevated Amber Rose. 
it's like people will go and follow these Instagram models, these, you know, influencers and get them to a status with their follows, their likes and everything else and then get upset at the aftermath. If she hustled black culture, that is because you all allowed her to hustle black culture. You all allowed her into black spaces. You guys wrote the the welcome mat out for her because of simply who she was dating, which was Kanye West and then Wiz Khalifa. So if black people are upset about that, y'all need to be upset at yourselves. Because in other places, again, a dark-skinned black woman could not go into those spaces and claim to be Cape Verde and, and, and be the face of Cape Verde. Just like, you know, you couldn't go into the Asian space and, and try to act like you're the next big thing in Asian culture. They respect certain spaces. They don't even deal with biracial Asians. If you're not full Asian, you're not going to be a representation of their culture. But unfortunately, with the black culture, we let any and everybody in. We let them come in, claim blackness, use it as they feel, make their coins and keep it moving. So I'm not mad at her because, again, it was social media. It was black spaces, black Twitter, black Instagram who rolled out the red carpet for this racially ambiguous woman. And now people are crying because she's basically saying, I'm not black. Look at me. I don't look black. I am mixed. And she is correct about that. So I think at this point, Jocelyn Hernandez, to me, is just beating a dead horse. And again, like I said, for years, she also tried to act like she was better than full black women because she was Puerto Rican, you know. So I think it's the pot calling the kettle black. Again, you know, for somebody who claims to be so pro-black and is so proud to be a black woman, most of the women that I've always seen Jocelyn put hands on and fight are other black women, you know, just like she beat up this young black girl, her and her crew, not too long ago. You know, they beat her up. They jumped her on Jocelyn's cabaret. She talks with a lot of those women crazy. She puts hands on them. So it's funny that she has all this talk for pro-blackness and black women, you know, need to represent black womanhood. But she disrespects black womanhood all the time via her show and her disrespecting other black women. So I find the whole situation, the whole conversation interesting. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want to know y'all's thoughts on this. How do you guys feel about what Jocelyn Hernandez had to say? Um, and then the fact that she feels like she's not Afro-Latina because she doesn't have an Afro is comical. Um, that didn't go miss with me. But as far as Amber Rose, how do you guys feel about Amber Rose not claiming to be black? Do you agree with that? Because, again, she's very racially ambiguous. Even her mother is mixed. And then on top of that... She does not look phenotypically black. She's obviously a mixed woman. She has black ancestry. Nobody's going to look at, let's say, a Sukiana and an Amber Rose and assume that Amber Rose is just as black as Suki. Like, that's silly. And I think people are being just willfully ignorant on this topic. But again, I leave the question up to you guys. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. What do you guys think about the Breakfast Club interview? What do you guys think about what Jocelyn had to say about her black identity and her going in on Amber Rose for not claiming her blackness? How do you guys feel about that i look forward to reading y'all's comments make sure you guys hit the video with a like feel free to share the video and i'll talk to y'all later deuces if you want the latest news in the streets join us and tune in for the tea breaking news with integrity so sell your friends and your family it's the lovely tv show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely tv show be sure to share like and subscribe